I think what we've managed to grow in the past decade is first, there's a many more startups, there's much more innovative activity growing with new enterprises. And that's partly because we've been able to create vehicles like Seraphim, the VC fund. And if I may say so, I also created the network of catapults and the satellite applications. Catapult is one of the successes and brings together public money and private money. We've got um, innovative startups and some funding for them. Um, secondly, I took a deliberate decision that we should play a much bigger role in ESA. And I think the relationship with ESA is even more important post-Brexit. Um, thirdly, I would, I would put on the list that uh, the established British doctrine had been that we didn't do manned missions. Um, and I changed that. I went to that ESA ministerial and saw an opportunity to take us into their uh, International Space Station program and to secure a flight for Tim Peake. I took that opportunity and I'm delighted that Tim got his mission and has proved to be a fantastic ambassador for space in the UK. My fourth item on this would also just put when there are in exciting new technologies to be willing to put some public money behind them, because sometimes the temptation in government is to play safe and only put money in when the commercial sector is already investing. That's no, there's no point in that. One of the jobs of government is to play, take risks. So that's why I invested in reaction engines in, in Novasar, uh, programs like that, which were probably a bit too risky for the commercial sector on its own. We have now got a lot of exciting startups and small enterprises. So I would like to see us growing significant new British space companies. And that involves the scale up challenge. It involves probably mixtures of public and private money. It involves more patient capital investment to help these companies grow. One of the reasons why uh, I set up the, the satellite applications catapult. Govern different government departments already use so many different services from space and you've suddenly got some flooding in a bad winter and you need images urgently or you're doing a military mission and need imagery or you need to be able to communicate. But it proved very hard to aggregate all this public spending power into proper big enough commissioning budgets that would help companies really grow. I think, to be honest, that is still a challenge, and I hope it's one of the things which the new Ministerial Space Council is able to tackle. Um, and then, of course, there are exciting new opportunities for us on, on space launch, where just because of, of the geography, especially of the, of the north of Scotland, there's a real opportunity for, for launching satellites into low Earth polar orbit. And I really want us to seize that opportunity. One of my final uh, statements as minister way back five years ago was that I really wanted to see Britain develop its own space launch capability. I hope now the sector is more self-confident and is more ambitious. And look, it is within our capabilities, technological capabilities, to be a, a place from which you launch British-made rockets to put British-made satellites into orbit, delivering space services around the world. Now. I'm not a complete nationalist. They don't have to be British made. Like we must be a host for lots of companies around the world. But the fact that the UK could do this, and we're one of the few countries where you look at all the technical expertise and the distribution of companies, that that is a coherent, viable proposition. We should be bloody proud of that. We are taking steps to promote autonomous vehicles. Um, that's one of the key roles of Leo constellations in delivering services and connectivity for them. Uh, there's the endless frustration of people who can't uh, access fast broadband in remote rural areas. One of the advantages of the new LEO constellations is the latency problem largely disappears. So yeah, you can one can see satellites being key to delivering a whole range of services. people understand technology is moving so fast and is so powerful that innovations in technology are part of the solution to a wide range of policy problems and often space is a key element in that. So we can see Elon Musk and SpaceX doing that. We can see uh, Jeff Bezos doing it. And it so happened that we'd got headquartered 
in the UK, in London, in OneWeb, the other big Western company that had a Leo constellation. And given it was here and was UK headquartered, seeing it lost from the UK, just at the point when everyone was beginning to understand the significance of Leo, because of its chapter 11 bankruptcy, which in turn was delivered by the problems of SoftBank, not by an inherent problem in the company, but because of SoftBank, its funder was in difficulties. Um, I thought it would have been a tragedy if we'd lost one web in those circumstances. There's a lot of international interest in OneWeb. It's also an opportunity to drive the development of space technology in the UK and promote a wide range of, uh, of companies in a space sector supply chain. So I think it's a great opportunity for us. I must um, congratulate the catapult. The catapult was crucial in giving some of the technical information about what was possible. That's when it really gets exciting. If the basic infrastructure is a Leo constellation, it's what are the smart extra services and capacities you can add to it over the years ahead. But unless you're in the game with a constellation, with the rights to the bandwidth, you're not going to be able to do that. When one looks to 2035, it is incredibly exciting, the range of services for which space will be used. And of course, we're already familiar with Earth observation, with communication, with positioning. We know all that and it'll get better and better and more and more pervasive and enable services to be delivered around the world, including to many poor countries that don't have conventional infrastructure. Um, and then, but I think increasingly things like manufacturing in space, we may well find that there's more and more uh, very sophisticated products that can be, um, that being manufactured in conditions of micro or zero gravity improves the efficiency of the process. Um, I'm no scientist, but some of the people on the biology life sciences side say that there's really interesting experiments in growing cells um, up in the space station and in other ways. And it may be that again, microgravity makes that more possible. Um, who knows if it becomes part of the green agenda and if we do find ways in which we can harness power via satellites. So, yeah, I think there's, an, there's a lot that space will be doing for us. And it's really important that Britain is part of that. It would have been as if in 1920, Britain had decided we weren't going to have anything to do with motor cars or in 1950, we decided we weren't going to have anything to do with jet engines. This is a crucial future sector where the UK has got a strong position and we must invest in it and support it.